Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'd ahabita fillah Continue on our study of Shaykh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab al-Wasabi wa rahmatullahi alayhi wa rahmatin wa asiyah His treaties on advice for the student of knowledge And just so we're aware about the source of this book This is a translated treaties that I translated some years ago and it's just a very short uh, awraq uh, or papers from the Sheikh's original text which is in Arabic and you will find this probably on his website or on the website Ulama Yemen uh, if you need to source the material as far as the Arabic uh, he mentioned the second point the second piece of advice for the Talib al-Ilm uh, he said, Rahmatullahi Rahmatan Wasi, I said, patience with attaining knowledge, revising and preserving it, maintaining it and spreading it. Allah the glorified and almighty said, and we made them leaders to guide by our command when they were patient. And it was narrated in the Sahih, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, patience is light. Yahya bin Ali Kathir said to his son, Knowledge is not gained by being comfortable in your body. And Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma said, Say to the student of knowledge that your two sandals, uh, take your two sandals from iron. Ahabatifillah, so far the nasus that the Shaykh is mentioning uh, are all illustrations of the importance of patience and that seeking knowledge is a patient endeavor. And getting to paradise is a patient endeavor. And as we mentioned before, Talib al-Ilm, Talib al-Jannah, that seeking knowledge is seeking paradise. And that's a patient process. It doesn't come overnight. And the hardships and difficulties that the student of knowledge may face are, are many. For some, some of the people uh, experience hunger. Some of the people experience sickness. And we've known people who've experienced all of those kind of things, all kind of illnesses that left them bedridden for months or, you know, losing 20, 30 kilos, as they say, you know, from sicknesses. And uh, I know particular individuals, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve them, that are major students of knowledge in the English-speaking world, that they lost a, a child. And I rem recall the last time I talked to a particular individual in Damaj from America, and I'll just leave it at that. And I was visiting, and he was just telling me, giving me an update. And he said, you know, Khalid, he said, me and my wife, we both realized this path of knowledge was serious when we lost uh, a child here, you know, in Damaj. And he said it devastated his wife. I think the child was like, you know, four months old or something, and they had to bury it and pray, pray on it there. Allah yarhamu. And that, uh, you know, he said, you know, he was just really resolute after that he said after that we knew this path was steep and we were we were in it to win it and he stayed he was in damage i don't know how many probably at least probably 15 or more years i'm sure more possibly almost 20 years until the end of uh the match and so uh this shows us uh that the you know it's a real struggle for many people and that to attain really to attain knowledge it requires that struggle and as the statement of the salaf talib al ilm lam yati bi rahat jazid or ilm lam yat bi rahat jazid that knowledge it doesn't come by uh, by having comfort in your body and when you look at a, even a lot of our contemporary ulama especially those who really strove and you could see that they have heads and one of the people that's young that I will say that uh, you know it was well known about in Medina uh, was Sheikh Suleiman al-Rahili and if you study with Sheikh Suleiman al-Rahili and are familiar with his durus you will see and I used to always mention this when I would talk to people about his durus that leaving his dars just one dars that means that means going through if you're going through a book with him and you just, even one daughter, it felt like you'd studied a whole book. And you felt like, you know, and this is metaphorical, but like blood was on the wall from 
what he left in there. It's less like a slaughter of knowledge. And that's the best way I could put it, you know, of, of the great benefit and his love for teaching. And he got that from, he was well known, him and, and uh, Sheikh uh, Ibrahim Raheli, for their, uh, you know, for their ibadah, you know, striving to be in the haram, to pray, and to, uh, you know, and especially Sheikh Suleiman, known for his, his uh, I guess when he was young, why other ch children and stuff like this were playing football, he was in the Qutb al -ilm. And you can really see those benefits in the way he's like a computer. And that computer is activated when he's giving his dudus. You just see him smile and you see his love for the knowledge. He loves to convey knowledge. And you, you see that that's where he's supposed to be. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created him for that position. And even, uh, you know, one of the mashayikh was mentioning about him. And, you know, and this is, uh, you know, shows his fadl that I think it was on Hajj and that there was a mas'ala and it went to so many people. Uh, so many mashayikh that were appointed for hajj and then the mas'ala came to sheikh Suleiman raheli and he you know dealt with it and it just showed his fadl showed that you know he is really you know allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed him with al al manafia and he loves to teach it and that came through patience and all those ulama uh that you see and that you've benefited and that you've heard of especially those major scholars they didn't get to where they uh, you know, they, they, they attained in knowledge from being the guys who were doing the extra, you know, uh, extracurricular activities. They were busy in ilm, you know, their whole life. Bed al juhd you know, Imam bin Baz, Imam al-Albani, look at that Imam. And Imam uh, Mukbil bin Hadi al-Wadi, uh, you know, and, and, and Imam bin Uthameen. You know, these, the, and, and the treasures that they left behind, it came through patience. And all those ulama that, that uh, were, if you want to say, graduated at their hands, you know. And if you look at also what you see in Yemen, for those who have been to Yemen, you will see how those ulama, and they're young, but you know, that they, those ulama there, and even the students, especially, they really focus on hithz, on, on, on memorization. So you see... There are things you you don't see usually in in Saudi so much, you know those scholars and the uh, the students there. You know you'll see guys like in imagine those places or even in Sanaa or whatever. You'd see a guy and he's you know maybe he's got Bukhari and Muslim on cap already. You know memorized Bukhari and Muslim with the isnad with the chain of narration. You know I remember a young guy and he'd walk around and imagine he'd ask and at that time I didn't really know Arabic. But I remember he would ask and, you know, and he'd say, you know, and someone would have to translate for me. And he'd say, you know, you know so what do you know? This, uh, he would come up to you and just say, what do you know? Because he wanted you to give a hadith and, you know, and he was going to, you know, check you or, you know, as his way of revision. So it just shows you that that comes with patience and that striving. Uh, and and, and it, it's not an easy path as the Salaf al-Salih, Ridwan Allahi alayhim, and those after them, uh... Uh, you know, who are on this path that they strove and fought to attain. So Al-Manafiyah doesn't come easy and it comes with patience. And even I can think of so many examples of people that I know who even spent much less time than I did, but they would be easily my teachers because they were serious and they were uh, in their hivs. I know a lot of Tulab, especially ones that went to Yemen. And of course, in Saudi uh, as well, but especially in Yemen, a lot that really, especially memorization, very strong in the memorization, because they didn't have the distractions, and it was a very different type of environment wherever you were, pretty much in Yemen. So, those kind of uh, those kind of benefits they come through patience. And Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "We can have a kareem." In the law, Masabari, verily laws with those who are patient. So to attain righteousness, to attain the end uh, result of being of the muttaqin, it, it comes through patience. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, We get Abdul Kareem after Audu Bilal bin Shaitan Rajim, Bismillah Rahman Rahim, while Asarina Lassan and the Fee, Husser Illa Ladina Amen, who Amelu Salihati, what was so bil Hakti, what was so bil Sabr. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by the time, and he says, Verily mankind is a loss. 
So ma mankind is in a loss. And then he says, Illa ladina amanu. And this is who he makes istithna. He, he makes the exception. Verily, except those. So then he's going to give us a criterion now. Illa ladina amanu. Those who believe. And what do you have to have to believe? You have to have ilm. You have to have knowledge. Because you can't just believe. You don't even know what you're believing if you don't know. You, you can't do ibadah properly without ilm. You can't. Uh, so that means you can't worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala properly without ilm. Ilm is just so important. It's not a, you know, just a thing of fame that people like and they jump on a bandwagon. They're going to go here. They're going to spend their money in this. You know, it's a very serious path. And it's a great ni'mah for those brothers and sisters who have strove with their efforts or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has favored them in some other way to have it paid for or to get a scholarship or whatever. It's a great immense uh, duty and responsibility, in fact. And it's a great ni'mah. And it requires patience to make, uh, to have tahseel uh, al-ilm. You know, to actually attain some knowledge. وَتَأْسِيلَ الْعِلْمِ And actually gain, you know, strong usul and a ground and, and grounded uh, foundation in knowledge. So all those things, they require patience. And so as we mentioned in Surah Al-Asr, إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا So you have to believe. وَعَمَلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ In practice, وَتَوَسُوا بِالْحَقِّ And be, uh, and invite, you know, giving da'wah, invite people to the truth. وَتَوَسُوا بِالصَّبْرِ And be patient on that a path and as Imam Muhammad said wa uh sabr ala adafi and being patient on the harm that comes with it because there's going to be harm in your body there's going to be harm from other individuals i know one individual and this is true alhamdulillah he's teaching now i see uh back out there and when he first went to damaj the stories you know the people and the other brother who i mentioned who uh you know stayed up there for a long time in the village he mentioned to me he said when so and so came the brothers got around him like an Islamic round table. And I said, Ahi, no, they didn't. He said, yes, they did. They got around him and they quizzed him and they grilled him and grinded him because he came from a particular community and they wanted to know they were testing him. Okay, because that fitna has been going on for <laughs> for centuries, you know, really. It's not just even fitna that we're, you know, it's not new bidah of testing the people and attacking the people's honor and you know, just because someone came from a particular community, they came to seek knowledge and they came to a place of the sunnah. So they grilled this brother and the, the brother told me, he said, he said, Akhi Khalid, he said, man, they made this grown man cry. I said, Akhi, come on, man. He said, yeah, they made him cry. So the point being a habit of Allah is it requires patience, it, patience in your honor. People will attack your honor. People will attack your status. People will attack you when you do learn knowledge uh during the course before you learn knowledge the whole path and you're going to be tested with wealth maybe sickness and and the ability to continue and you'll be tested with do you have the patience to even be a student of knowledge and according to the level of your patience and sincerity is gonna be uh you know have an effect on your results because maybe you'll do some thought about it but maybe you won't really get the same natija because you weren't really patient so it's very important to be patient uh the next uh point the imam mentioned is he said uh fear of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so this leads right into this and this shows the the hikmah of the ulama and the shaykh rahmatullahi rahmatul wasiya he mentions and he goes right into it and this is so important fear of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and before I even get into that, and, and the Rasul said, he, he just mentioned some text. Uh, uh, an important point is uh, the effects of sins on, uh, on Talib al-Ilm. And sinfulness uh, really affects your, your seeking of knowledge. And some of the people, they didn't gain knowledge because of their sinfulness. Either because they engaged in things that were not beneficial and they were just wasting time while they had the opportunity to seek knowledge or because they were in major sins. They could have been in, unfortunately, zina and all kind of things. And this crippled their ability to really uh, attain the knowledge. Also, it affects your heads and stuff like this. And this is uh, as some of the Salaf used to mention. And this is also was related to me. And I'll mention his name. Mustafa George, he mentioned th this to me in Medina, I remember. Uh, he mentioned that this was advice given to him because I said, yeah, I'm from Seattle. He said, oh, do you know so-and-so? He advised me when I was a new student and said to me that, you know, one of the things in seeking this path of knowledge is to beware of the sins. 
And he said that that was something that stuck with him. And this was from a Dai who's famous in Seattle. And so that stuck with me. And uh, and it shows you the importance that you have to have taqwa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the knowledge should be a means to get you taqwa. You know, it should be a means. Because verily those who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala most are al-ulama. Are the ulama, the scholars. So al-amal thamarat al-ilm. Al-amal thamarat al-ilm. So deeds are the fruits of knowledge. So very quickly... Uh, the Sheikh mentioned fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, Allah the glorified and almighty said, Oh, you will believe if you fear Allah, he will make for you a criterion. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make you a fur furqan. If you have taqwa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant you. That's probably one of the strongest advices the Sheikh mentioned. And I really actually wish I would have really understood that and taken that to heart and had that emphasized before we tried to seek knowledge. Uh, is that the importance of actually fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and practicing and not just, you know, uh, you know, we didn't have a lot of guidance when I was going out and a lot of the people that I, you know, uh, that we, we sought with as a generation, you know, so we tried our best and some people gained something and some people gained not much and some people Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala favored to gain a lot. May Allah bless them. And with that being the case, uh, this taqwa, this is, will help you to be a criterion. And may Allah help us to fear him. I mean, And Allah the Almighty and glorified said, O you who believe, fear Allah and believe in his messenger. He will give you two portions of his mercy and make you a light that you can walk with and forgive you. And Allah the glorified and Almighty said, fear Allah and Allah will teach you. So if you want to know the key, really one of the keys to success for Talib al-Ilm is fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Once you forget that, you will see how you decline and once a person forgets that you will see how they're declined and now unfortunately with social media and stuff like that you can actually watch and monitor someone because everyone wants to post their business they want to post their lives entirely uh even the students of knowledge so unfortunately this can be a harm this can be a benefit a blessing and a harm instead of seeking knowledge some of the people they're just making they're already, you know, teaching and making videos and stuff like this. They're already, you know, posting everything they do on Instagram and this and this and this. You know, here I just visit Sheikh so-and-so. They're not giving us a fight. Oh, she, this is Sheikh's house. We just sat with the Sheikh. Oh, here's a picture of us doing this. And, you know, and alhamdulillah, and I'm not really knocking, but I just want to emphasize how different the generations are and how those things can distract you more. So be careful try to attain fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because when you, you're going to see the difference that you may spend a couple years seeking knowledge and it'll be very different than your companion that maybe had no social media account but he memorized the Quran in a year and he did this and this and maybe you didn't even memorize nothing but a couple of Jews in a, two years so you're going to see a big difference because of that so you need to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as much as possible and stay away from the munkarat and stay away from backbiting and namima and ghiba as we'll see as the shaykh is going to uh, advise us with wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina muhammad